Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. I'm of the stars. And I just thought I'd talk for a minute about where it seems like the notion of groups is going right now. Uh, because now it's December, going on towards solstice for 2015. And some time ago, maybe six months, maybe more, uh, I remember Sa Sandra Walter talking about how it's important not to group anymore, you know. And my uh, concept of this is that as people gain more and more light quotient, they come to a point where grouping is just not the right thing for them, or, or at least grouping in a permanent sense is, is not as good as occasionally uh, like attending groups or, or, or maybe even avoiding groups and just being around small groups from time to time, see. So, and, and so the, one of the reasons why this is true is that as people gain light quotient, they become very uh, extremely sensitive to thought forms from other people. And people with less light quotient um, are not yet at that point of sensitivity. And so through their subconscious minds, they can repeat over and over again some uh, like um, especially l lower triangle motivated phrase that is like traditional for them or malware that they have and uh, that they don't even know that they're doing. And so it can adversely affect the body of light of a person with higher light quotient. And, um, it, you know, there is always the option for, for the higher light quotient person to say, please stop that in a polite way. But 50% of the time, the likelihood is they would, wouldn't have any notion what it is that they're supposed to stop. And so they just feel bad about it. And the other 50% of the time, they might feel a little bit bad anyway. So, so there's that question that comes up. There are people that I know that are, that are just beginning to wake up, just beginning to arise and awaken, that have very um, difficult, what you might call, well, socially unacceptable malware in their lower chakras, in their uh, lower triangle. And when these people come upon others who are higher like, like quotient, say sit down to a meal or whatever, uh, then it can be extremely uncomfortable for the group that's, that's higher like quotient. They, however, are doing good work right now in um, slowly correcting and politely correcting the misimpressions of the um, desire elementals of newly awakened people. I, I'm very proud of of the light crowd for doing that and not taking offense about it. And then the last thing I have to talk about regarding the difficulties of people with higher light quotients being in groups has to do with um, um, what, what you call social contracts. And it is social contracts, first of all, I will say, that hold groups in place. It, and when all the members of a group agree to a social contract, on the subconscious plane, then a group is functional. But if some members don't agree to um, the social, the subconscious social contract of the group, then the group is what they call dysfunctional. I think that's the name. So let's look at a, a functional social group. Okay, there are uh, social contracts in place that um, are deeply subconscious and that have to do with the workings of every group. And uh, one of those is leadership. Okay. Leadership, uh, the leadership of a group by, is usually by one person and, in, and it's adhered to through the pack instincts of humanity, which are very, very deeply buried in the subconscious. And so what it, what it results in, though, is um, if you consider the co-creation of reality or the karmic play, this leader of the group uh, will will run the will be the director of the karmic play. Will will be the one who co-creates the reality of the entire group. And for those who are uh, subconsciously clairaudient, it's a very strange uh, scene indeed. And what it sounds like is, up above the head, see this is the seventh chakra, right about the crown chakra, used to be enlightenment, and then up above that is the eighth chakra, higher up, right? Higher above the head. 
up in that area above the head in the electromagnetic field, there is a telepathic center where the, the leader of a group directs the co-creation of reality for the entire group. And he does this through his shadow, this person, the shadow of his personality. Or she does it through the shadow of her personality. And so when the person with a little bit higher light quotient is listening to this, it's ex an extremely um, interesting interplay of the people involved in the group. And frequently the interplay has to do with uh, what you might call dissing or disengaging or disenfranchising or... Um, what's it called, uh, ostracizing a person who is a dysfunctional member of the group or perceived to be so, or a person who used to be a member of the group and who left. And so the entire play, the, the entire karmic play that is taking place for, an, for a group might have to do with um, a shadow's personality performances uh, engaged for the entire group by the leader. Pretty cool, huh? And so that's one other reason why, uh, because the light quotient, uh, the higher light quotient, makes a person different from the group, and the the um, their hearing of what for everyone else is pretty much a subconscious, like confabulation going on. The hearing of this this clear audience, like constant whatever it is from the shadow side, the dark side that keeps us in the third dimension is an uncomfortable experience for the person with higher light quotient. And so they tend to drift out of groups, you know. And so you'll find that the people as that gain light quotient will, will be hoping to move into some other form of group uh, like structure, not based on the subconscious mind, but based on conscious choices by everybody in the group. Now, what that, what the form of the new group will take is 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 still up in the air because there are not enough people that hear all that's going on that can like craft groups in this way quite yet. Okay, but there is like a longing among us. There's a longing that we have to. To, uh, to live in harmony with the all, with all the people on earth and all beings everywhere. What form that harmony will take remains to be seen, right? One good example of the new way has to do with the uh, Global Coherence Initiative. Here they have 60,000 people and they're pretty free form, you know. There's a guy that's in charge, but he's he's very less, how do you say it, less a fair guy. He's very um, just laid back and very heart-centered. And, and he doesn't... He doesn't rule the group. I've never heard a social contract in his subconscious mind ever. He springs forth with joy into every situation and invites the other members of the group to participate. It's pretty cool. So this is maybe one option for the future, you know. And so that's all I have for you today. I wish you all the greatest light and joy and peace in this holiday season and the blessings of the new light coming to earth. Take care.